Hello everyone. Welcome back to this series on uh, machine intelligence and modern infrastructure. This time I'm pretty excited to bring you getting started with Google Corel Dev Kit and USB Accelerator. My name is Janaki Ram. I am the presenter for the day and my credentials include being a Google developer expert on uh, Google Cloud and IoT, also an Azure MVP uh, from Microsoft. Uh, I work on a variety of edge computing platforms, IoT uh, related technologies, and I'm very excited to bring you this brand new kit from Google, which is all about uh, ML inferencing and performing AI at edge. So if you are new to MI2, it stands for Machine Intelligence and Modern Infrastructure. It's a platform that I created to deliver informative and insightful sessions every alternate week. Every month I bring two webinars covering the latest and the greatest technologies. This is a completely vendor neutral and brand independent platform for me to deliver some of the happening technologies. Though I, I have some sponsors, I have extreme freedom to deliver um, any technology that actually falls under the domain of machine intelligence and modern infrastructure. You can look at the upcoming sessions at mi2.live. And as I mentioned, today I'm going to bring you uh, the Google Corel Dev Kit and Edge TPU. So, before I go any further, let me let me bring up a quick poll to make sure you're able to follow the audio and the video. So you would see a poll on your screen. Let me know if you are able to listen to my audio and see my screen. Fantastic. Looks like everyone has uh, good access to the AV. Perfect. So let's get started. What I'm going to cover today. Well, the whole Google Corel Dev Kit is, is about running machine learning models at high performance at the edge. And the technology that is enabling the ML inferencing at edge is TPU or tensor processing unit. You know, Google has two flavors of it. One is called the cloud TPU that runs in their public cloud. And then there is an edge TPU, which is meant to be uh, attached to uh, IoT edge devices or, or gateways to accelerate ML inferencing. So I'm going to start off with a quick overview of TPU and how the cloud TPU and edge TPU enable machine learning training and inferencing. And then I'll take a closer look at Corel Dev Kit and we'll understand the differences between the Dev Kit and the USB accelerator. And I have a pretty interesting demo. Uh, I, I don't do any session without a live demo and this session is not an exception. I'm going to walk you through a couple of demos that I have built and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very sure you're going to find this useful. What I'm not going to cover in this webinar is setting up installation and configuration of Google Corel Dev Kit. It's not uh, really required because Google's documentation is pretty helpful and you don't really need a live demo of that. So assuming you procure one of these devices and you set it up according to Google's official documentation, uh, you will be able to get started and I will I will walk you through some tutorials and uh, samples shipped by Google as well as a custom demo that I have built. Excellent. So let's get to the basics. There is a there's a huge buzz and um, and hype around GPUs. Today if you look at public cloud whether it is Amazon or Microsoft or Google or IBM or Oracle all of them offer GPU based instances uh, and, and predominantly these instances run NVIDIA's GPU in the form of uh, P80 or uh, P100 T4 GPU instances and uh, they are predominantly used for training machine learning models at scale and then of course we have the, the CPU and uh, mind you, GPU is not a replacement to CPU. Though there is a lot of buzz and hype and noise around GPUs, a GPU cannot exist without a CPU. But to appreciate uh, TPUs, which is the focus of today's webinar, you need to understand the fundamental differences between CPU and GPU. So why do customers use GPUs for machine learning jobs? So every processor, whether it is uh, a, a entry level Intel Atom processor or a very high end Intel Xeon processor, every CPU has an uh, arithmetic logical unit, an ALU, some memory, and of course the core 
CPU processor responsible for executing these instructions. So the ALU assists the CPU in performing some logical operations as well as mathematical operations. But when it comes to machine learning and high performance computing and even workloads like video rendering and game rendering, the number of cores that are there on a CPU are not sufficient. We need to have mathematical calculations run in parallel and then converge at some point to deliver uh, the rendering or a high performance computing job or even machine learning training. Remember what is common between uh, video rendering, game rendering and machine learning? Well, there are a ton of matrix additions and multiplications that take place in parallel when you are uh, running those jobs. Now the CPU is not ideal for running this parallel set of instructions at any given point of time. And it doesn't mean CPU is less powerful or anything, but CPU is designed to perform uh, instructions in a sequence and it has uh, a fewer number of cores to even parallelize these operations. To give you a sense of uh, how many cores come with a CPU and how many come with GPU, let's take uh, Intel Xeon Platinum 8180. It's one of the popular CPUs from Intel. It's one of the high end CPUs as well. Now it comes with 28 cores and uh, each core is almost like an independent CPU. That means there are 25, 28 CPUs packaged into one form factor, one uh, Uber uh, CPU that actually contains all these cores. So this comes with 2.5 gigahertz. Uh, that is the frequency, that is the speed and it can uh, perform 2240 gigaflops. So a gigaflop is a measurement of operations per second. So how many operations can uh, the CPU perform? And a gigaflop is uh, typically performing a billion operations in a second. That sounds like a lot. So a typical 2.5 gigahertz Intel Xeon Platinum processor performs 2200 G flops in a second, which is phenomenal. And then let's take a look at Nvidia's V100 uh, Volta GPU. Now, the speed of this GPU is 1.53 gigahertz. Definitely not as fast as the Intel CPU, but here is the deal. It comes with 80 cores and it can perform 7,000 gigaflops in a second. This is phenomenal. That means uh, the, the uh, GPU is able to execute almost thrice the number of operations in a second than its CPU counterpart. So a flop, is basically what a machine can do in one second and it is measured in terms of operations. So a GPU obviously is designed to perform these operations at a much higher scale and also at a very faster rate. And this is assisted by CPU as in if you are running a machine learning training job or a video rendering or a high performance computing job, uh, it is the CPU that runs the core application and a part of the application predominantly responsible for performing matrix or tensor calculations is offloaded to the GPU. So uh, the, the analogy that I want to give you to appreciate the power of GPU is in, in, a, in a typical civil environment, you know, construction environment, you have an architect and an architect owns the design, the blueprint and the architecture of a massive building. But the architect alone cannot actually translate his blueprint into a massive building, a, a huge building, a multi floor building. You need multiple workers who will take the blueprint and instructions from the architect and uh, multiple workers simultaneously do their own job, which will translate the design or blueprint into a construction um, uh, uh, entity like a building or a, or a, or a complex or a multi floor aid. Uh, real estate complex. So, uh, so think of GPU like an army of workers and think of the CPU as the boss, as the architect. Now, uh, you cannot obviously have an army of architects. They are very expensive, they are very niche and they are powerful. So you can only have handful of architects, but you can have uh, tens of thousands of workers, skilled labor who will actually um, lay the foundation and place one brick on top of the other and actually erect the entire building. So 
GPU is like an army of workers that can take instructions from the CPU and uh, do a lot of calculations, very niche, very specialized task, one at a time, but in a parallel um, uh, uh, scenario. Whereas the CPU does lesser number of operations per second, but it is more general purpose. It is, um, it is actually like the boss and it is an architect, uh, which is instructing the workers on what needs to be done. So uh, that is the difference between a CPU and GPU. So a CPU has more memory, it has more power, but it can only do few things at a given point of time. Uh, a GPU has uh, lesser memory, but more number of cores and can perform more number of operations in the given time. So that is the fundamental difference. Now, what is TPU? Remember, even before machine learning became a buzzword and a trend, game rendering, video rendering, and high performance computing like genome analysis, molecular analysis, that existed for a couple of decades. So all those high performance computing tasks were always running on GPUs. Machine learning is one of the most recent workloads that got enabled by GPUs. So a GPU existed even before machine learning became a thing. Now, looking at how GPUs have evolved and how they are accelerating and enabling machine learning jobs, Google has come out with a very specialized niche uh, optimized uh, GPU like processor. It is actually called as an ASIC application specific integrated circuit and an ASIC does one thing very well. It is a highly specialized niche powerful custom piece of hardware designed to do uh, a very specific task. So while GPUs are good at a lot of general purpose, high performance computing tasks, including machine learning, the TPU from Google is highly optimized for training TensorFlow models and inferencing TensorFlow models. Obviously, TensorFlow is the machine learning framework from Google. So when Google invested in a chip, a processor, an accelerator, they obviously optimized it for TensorFlow. So a Google TPU is like GPU, but it doesn't do video rendering. It doesn't do molecular genome analysis. It doesn't do video rendering. It only does one thing that is running TensorFlow models at speed, at scale, whether it is training or inferencing. And it is highly optimized. And because it is designed to do one thing really well, it is also much cheaper than GPU. GPU is slightly broader in terms of what it can actually do. And that's the reason why GPUs are more expensive. Whereas a TPU uh, is highly optimized for TensorFlow and it is coming from Google. So obviously it has been optimized for price and performance. And by the way, you can buy a GPU off the shelf. Now Nvidia is making a ton of money. You know, their entire revenue is coming from the way they sell GPUs and anyone can buy GPUs today. Uh, you know, it coming from the GeForce GTX series that is powering the desktops and laptops to a very high-end rack of servers powered by GPUs like T4 um, server rack. So, so you can actually buy GPUs, but you cannot buy TPU. TPU is not sold in the retail market by Google. But if you really want to consume TPUs and uh, exploit them, you can actually sign up for Google Cloud and you can start uh, using cloud TPUs, a flavor of Google, Google TPU uh, exposed via Google Cloud Platform for training your TensorFlow models. So what is a TPU? As I mentioned, it's an, it's an ASIC, Application Specific Integrated Circuit designed for neural networks that do specifically written in TensorFlow. And TPUs have been in use at Google since 2015. Uh, majority of the products that we use like Search, Translate, and Photos take advantage of TPUs for training and inferencing. Uh, they are used to accelerate deep learning. You know, on, on a CPU, if uh, you're running a machine learning training job, it can take forever and it might even crash because um, the, the, the CPU doesn't just have the horsepower to parallelize these operations. Uh, whereas the same job when run on a TPU, it will be done in few hours to few days to few weeks, depending on how large the data set is and how complex your neural network is. But TPU definitely accelerates the training and inferencing. It is designed to consume less power than CPUs and even GPUs. And as I mentioned, 
Cloud TPU is a flavor of tensor processing unit exposed uh, through the Google Compute Engine. So you can spin up a, a GCE instance that is powered by uh, a Cloud TPU. And, and obviously Cloud TPU is highly optimized for TensorFlow. It is a part of the Google AI portfolio. Uh, the AI platform comes with uh, one of the offerings, which is Cloud TPU. So, so that is uh, TPU at the, at the uh, cloud. And uh, the, the first version of TPU was launched in 2015, and it was uh, mostly used for internal workloads at Google. V2 was launched in 2017, and it started supporting both inferencing and training. And in case you're not very familiar between the difference, or difference between inferencing and training, training is basically building a model. You take, for example, uh, 25,000 images of cats, 25,000 images of dogs. Then you take a neural network and you train the neural network with these 50,000 images. And after the training, the model is now ready to detect whether the shown image is a cat or a dog. So that process of extracting features and finding um, uh, uh, hyperparameters and uh, making sure that the neural network is capable of recognizing the images is called training. And that is a massive operation in terms of calculations and compute tasks. Once the model is fully trained, what you actually walk away with is a, a binary. It is typically a protobuf if you are actually using um, TensorFlow or it could be a checkpoint file with, with, the, with a set of weights. So you go away with a, a fully trained model and some parameters, some, some weights um, that you can actually use offline uh, away from the cloud in, in any environment uh, for uh, classifying an image into a, into a cat or dog. So that classification, which is done offline in a very different environment than cloud is called inferencing. Uh, for example, iOS developers can perform inferencing on iPhones. Uh, Android developers can run the same model and perform inferencing on an Android. Uh, so if you are running the same model for online inferencing in the cloud, you can take advantage of TPOs because inferencing is also a computer intensive task. You know, it doesn't mean um, you don't need to power that with uh, GPUs or TPOs. It is also equally intensive, but definitely not as much as the training job. So uh, Google TPUs are used for both um, training as well as inferencing. Now, the most recent version uh, is Cloud TPU V3. And this is highly optimized. It was launched in 2018 at Google I.O. Sundar Pichai announced it on stage. And uh, these are highly optimized for TensorFlow training and inferencing. And today, these are available in GCP uh, as uh, Cloud TPU and TPU pods. You can actually spin up a cluster and, uh, and perform training at scale and at high performance. So that is the history of uh, TPU. Now, what is Edge TPU? Well. An edge TPU is a miniature version of the actual TPU. So TPUs are supposed to run in the data center of Google or in the cloud environment, which is Google Cloud Platform. Now, once the training is done in, in uh, one of these environments powered by the cloud TPU, you can take that model and run it for inferencing at edge. Now, what is edge? And uh, how is this different from a mobile phone? Technically speaking, a mobile can also develop as an edge, but it is not ruggedized enough to actually perform uh, the inferencing. So in industrial scenarios and in real world deployments, an edge computer or an edge server is a highly ruggedized, uh, waterproof, heatproof, dustproof, um, environment proof appliance that actually sits very close to the machinery or the uh, remote site. For example, an edge device might be deployed on a, on a wind turbine, which is pretty tall, and it is not easy to actually um, deploy anything, but once deployed, 
the edge device is going to monitor the uh, the the metrics of a wind turbine you know for example um, the the rotation per minute speed of the fan uh, how much power is it generating and what is the ambient temperature what is the um, what are the vibrations that are getting generated what is the noise that is generated by these fans um, and and is it is it healthy enough so all of that is performed by an edge device that is <clears throat> that is deployed on a on a turbine <clears throat> or a windmill now um, that is basically the power of edge so edge is going to live very close to the devices um, the sensors and the devices and the actual machinery and um, ai is becoming one of the biggest drivers of edge computing because uh, when the data is generated by these machines you need to find anomalies we need to find uh, some patterns and you need to perform some ai inferencing uh, within few milliseconds of the data getting generated. You don't have the luxury of uh, streaming that data to the cloud and a model um, trying to find an anomaly. And after it finds an anomaly, it comes back uh, through a full round trip and then informs the gateway. And th then the gateway does some action like shutting down the faulty machine. That's going to take a few seconds to few minutes and sometimes few hours, you know, depending on how complex the data processing pipeline is. Whereas, if you actually put this model, the anomaly detection or predictive maintenance model for inferencing at the edge, you avoid the round trip to the cloud and it can immediately find a, a, a fault or a problem or an anomaly uh, within a few seconds of the data getting generated. So this is becoming very, very powerful. And it also uh, aligns with the compliance and privacy, confidentiality and security policies of organizations. For example, in a radiology department, there could be an edge device that is directly infer inferencing the X-rays, MRI scans, and CT scans generated by uh, the the healthcare equipment. Now, um, due to some local restrictions, you cannot really stream the data to the cloud. So those X-ray images need to be inferenced right um, at the same place. So an edge device is a is is an ideal location. To run this model now when you are running this model with um, multiple x-ray images and these x-ray images are actually um, used used via dicom format and they are pretty large and they are pretty uh, compute intensive tasks uh, in inferencing those images so so you need to definitely have an accelerator to speed up inferencing of these x-ray images and medical records uh, so so that's the reason why you need to have accelerators at the edge. Uh, NVIDIA is doing a lot to bring the uh, GPUs to the edge. They have a family of products called Jetson. It starts with Jetson Nano, Tech TX1, TX2, and Xavier. All of them uh, empower edge devices with acceleration. Now, Google is not sitting quiet. Google definitely wants to uh, bring its TPU power all the way to the edge and that's the reason why they designed edge tpu so an edge tpu complements an edge gateway or an edge device by accelerating or speeding up inference uh, running locally running at the edge so it complements cloud tpu and if you look at this slide that i am showing you here you basically have training done based on cloud tpus you evolve a model you bring that model all the way to the edge and you perform inferencing. And this entire uh, cycle is going to be repeated um, multiple times because data keeps changing and you need to retrain, you need to evolve the model, deploy the model and perform inferencing regularly. So uh, this is actually a two-sided arrow, uh, but, but technically speaking, train the model in the cloud, deploy it on the edge. So, so that, is, um, that is edge TPU. Now, Google has also created an optimized version of TensorFlow to run in resource constrained devices like mobile phones. And the TensorFlow framework meant to run at these uh, lower, smaller form factor devices is called TensorFlow Lite. So you train a model and then you convert the model into TensorFlow Lite and deploy it in mobile phones. Now with HTPU, you have another target for TensorFlow Lite. So when you're actually training a model with TensorFlow in the cloud, you not only generate a TensorFlow Lite meant to be running inside a mobile phone, but you will also run it through another compiler 
which will optimize it for the edge TPU. So the idea is uh, you train the model with TensorFlow, you convert that into TensorFlow Lite, ready to be run inside mobile phones and Raspberry Pis and so on. And then you run it through another compiler, which will optimize it and compresses it further to run on edge TPU because edge TPU is a very tiny, highly constrained device. You cannot run full blown TensorFlow models on that. That's the reason why you need to run it through a compiler um, which will optimize the model. It will reduce the size and the footprint without compromising on the accuracy and performance. So that is that is what you need to do to convert. But that's a different uh, topic altogether. And I'm, I'm going to um, run a couple of sessions next quarter, starting July, on how to train a model in the cloud and run it at the edge. But this is the big picture, so I'm not really getting into the training, conversion, and uh, deployment mechanism. So what is Google Corel? Well, um, edge TPU, as you have seen, you know, uh, the, the, look at the form factor. Uh, it is it is extremely small. If you if you take a, a cent, um, uh, a currency used in uh, United States, and uh, and place a TPU on that, it doesn't even take 100% of that. It is just one fourth of of the of the cent. So it is extremely small. Uh, so programming the TPU is not going to be easy. Uh, so you need to have a platform you need to have um, a friendly extension to tpu uh, edge tpu to program so google corel is a prototyping platform for the edge tpu so it comes with pretty developer friendly uh, kits as in it is a development board so you can uh, use that board it actually runs a version of debian linux called mendel so uh, you can actually plug that into a normal power and then connect it to your machine and use the serial port to access it. You can SSH into it. You can deploy TensorFlow Lite models optimized for HTPU. You can debug it. You can test it. You can treat it like a full blown uh, machine to, to, to deploy, debug and test uh, TensorFlow Lite models. But the beauty is once the HTPU is ready to run the model and once you have tested your model thoroughly, uh, through the Corel dev board. You can take off the TPU from that and put it in a drone or put it in a windmill, put it in a turbine and, and actually use it in production. So uh, you don't need the dev kit, obviously in deployment and production environments, but during prototyping, development, testing, debugging, uh, the, the uh, Corel dev kit and the Corel platform will help you uh, perform all these tasks. But once it is done, it is like burning the final model and the parameters, the optimized parameters to an HTPU, unplugging it from the Corel dev board and then plugging it into your production device. So that is the workflow. Uh, so bottom line, Google Corel is a platform for prototyping HTPUs. It is not required in the production environments. It is only meant for dev test and debugging. So. What are the differences between cloud TPU and edge TPU? Well, um, cloud TPU can do both ML training and inferencing. For example, you train a massive classification neural network, an object detection or image classification. You run it online on Kubernetes. Your Kubernetes cluster will be powered by cloud TPU. Whereas the edge TPU can do ML inference. Technically speaking, you can still train but you can only do what is called as transfer learning. And, and that is not a, a full, fully fledged training, um, training job. It basically takes an existing neural network and quickly modifies a couple of layers to, uh, to, to actually perform uh, detection or classification. So technically speaking, you can, but this is highly optimized for inference. Uh, in Cloud ML Engine, you can actually um, run with, uh, as I mentioned, you know, Kubernetes or Cloud IoT Core. Uh, those are the services that feed into the uh, Cloud TPU for training. Whereas when it comes to Edge TPU, uh, you are actually running a Linux operating system, a Debian uh, distribution to actually talk to the Edge TPU. So ML frameworks, as I mentioned, uh, you can use high level TensorFlow Lite or you can use a neural net API, which is very low level, C++. And TensorFlow Lite actually um, is, is, is uh, wrapped inside the Edge TPU SDK, which will provide a very high level SDK. I'm going to show you a quick demo of that. 
Uh, whereas in um, Google Cloud, when you are actually training, you can use TensorFlow, Scikit-Learn, XGBoost, and Keras. Of course, TPUs are more optimized for TensorFlow, but technically you can even run other, um, other frameworks, but they may not really take advantage of TPUs. Uh, so hardware accelerators on the edge, it is predominantly edge TPU, GPU, and sometimes CPU. And on the cloud for um, uh, accelerating both training and inferencing, you, you can actually have cloud TPU, GPU, or a CPU. Now, those are the fundamental differences between the cloud TPU and edge TPU. But the bottom line, you train in the cloud powered by cloud TPU, you run it at the edge powered by edge TPU. All right, so Google Corel currently comes with uh, two prototyping devices. The first one is called as a dev board. It closely resembles a Raspberry Pi. It actually uh, inspired by Raspberry Pi design. You know, the GPIO pin um, section and the HDMI port, the RJ45 socket, uh, a lot of those things uh, resemble Raspberry Pi pretty closely. Uh, the form factor looks very similar and, and it is uh, a system on a module uh, as in, you know, it is it is like a, a mini computer. It actually runs Mendel, which I mentioned earlier. It's a uh, Debian flavor of Linux. You can boot it up, you can configure, and after that you can SSH, treat it like a full-blown um, computer, pretty much like a Raspberry Pi. And the heatsink that you see is actually hiding the edge TPU. So behind that heatsink, the aluminum heatsink, is the edge TPU that is sitting on top of the Google Corel dev board uh, to to accelerate the uh, inference. Once you are convinced and you are uh, ready to move it to production, you can actually unplug the TPU and move it over to your production devices. On my right, you actually see USB accelerator. And this is a pretty cool device. It is uh, an edge TPU wrapped inside a plastic cabinet that can be connected to a USB 3 port. So uh, it doesn't come with a full blown computer instead you need to connect that to any linux host running ubuntu or any flavor of debian and google ships an sdk uh, which you can install to talk to the usb accelerator this is very handy if you're actually using a laptop and you want to um, uh, debug and test uh, tf light models optimized for HTPU. whereas the dev board is more meant for prototyping um, which will eventually move into production. Whereas this is a very portable, very handy accelerator, uh, accelerator which comes like a USB stick and, and you, can, you can use it with your uh, development workstations running Linux uh, to thoroughly test the models. So um, these are the specs that I copied from the Google Corel website. You know, if this is not clear enough, you can always visit Google Corel um, home page and you can you can click on the dev board to look at the specs basically it comes with an nxp cpu uh, it's a cortex a53 it's a cpu um, that is powering most of the system on chip boards it comes with a very lightweight gpu but the uh, usp is the google edge tpu coprocessor that accelerates ml inferencing comes with 1 gb of ram 8 gb of emmc so you don't need a uh, an SD card. It comes with eMMC storage to run Mendel. Uh, it has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. There are some other details like, you know, it comes with 3.5mm audio jack, a HDMI port, uh, multiple GPIO pins that are compatible with uh, Raspberry Pi. Um, and it, it, it also has a flash memory in, in, in the form of a micro SD slot. So you can actually extend the storage by inserting a micro SD slot. So, so those are the specs for Google uh, Corel dev board, the Raspberry Pi like uh, device. Uh, the accelerator doesn't have anything. It draws the power out of a USB-C type uh, cable. It uses it for both power as well as data. Um, and it is one of the few devices that actually comes with a USB-C type connector. And, and it, it, it optimizes for both data transfer and drawing the power from the host PC. So, uh, by the way, it's not just a PC. You can also connect the Corel USB accelerator to a Raspberry Pi. You can even connect it to a Raspberry Pi 0W, um, which is almost as the same form factor as Corel uh, USB accelerator, and you can perform inferencing. So you connect a, a Raspberry Pi camera to the 0W, 
and you connect the Corel uh, USB accelerator to the same Raspberry Pi Zero and you can perform uh, fast inferencing and, and this entire thing is pretty cool because it is very small. You can actually fit that into um, a cabinet that is powering a CC camera so you can actually scoop out all the components of a cheap CC camera and you can plug in a Raspberry Pi Zero into it. You can push a Corel into it and connect the power and turn that into a smart camera. Uh, and that is something that I'm currently working on. You will hear more about that. So you can actually build a pretty cool prototype with uh, the accelerator and Raspberry Pi Zero W. Now it's time for a demo. So I'm pretty excited. Uh, I figured out how to actually uh, show you a live demo without, uh, without really uh, moving fragile things uh, around. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you the USB accelerator, but the workflow is pretty much the same. So let me let me actually uh, take you to my Ubuntu host. So I'm actually running um, an Ubuntu laptop next to me, and it is powered by an NVIDIA um, 1060 Ti GPU, and it runs uh, Ubuntu 16.04, and it is my AI test bed. So what I'm going to do is log into it, and uh, I hope you are able to see my screen. And, and um, let me actually bring up a camera just to show you the accelerator that I have here. So I'm going to launch a demo that pops up a camera so you can actually see a couple of devices here. Okay, this is actually meant to be a demo which I'm going to show you a little later but I'm pulling up this, um, this, this camera just to show you I have um, I have the USB accelerator connected. So you you notice this. This is the Corel USB accelerator, uh, and you know it has a bulb. It is currently steady because, or rather, it's blinking because I'm actually running a demo. It's consuming the edge TPU. That's why it is constantly blinking. Uh, so this is the edge uh, TPU powered Google Corel USB accelerator. It doesn't have anything except the USB C type cable. Perfect. Now, um, I also have the uh, Corel dev board and I'm actually not using this for the demo because technically it doesn't make much difference, uh, you know, except that I would SSH into this instead of my uh, Linux host. Technically, it doesn't really uh, make any difference. It's the same SDK, same walkthrough. Um, this is still not available in India due to some complaints. So I actually got it from uh, US. Uh, so this is a pretty powerful device and I'm very fascinated by the way Google designed this board. It, it packs a punch. It comes with everything that you need to um, run edge, uh, AI at edge you know, for inferencing. So that was a quick showcase of you know the, the Corel uh, USB accelerator and the dev board. Fantastic. Okay, so now let me close this and take you back to a simple demo and then we'll come back and do real-time inferencing. So first I want to show you how uh, you can perform inferencing um, with, with Edge TPU. So here is a, a simple JPEG. Uh, it, it has a parrot, it has a macaw. So uh, what we'll actually do is to pass this image to a TensorFlow Lite model, optimize it for Edge TPU and see how it actually detects this. So I'm going to run demo.sh, but I'll show you what's inside that. So here I have, I'm, I'm invoking a, a Python script called classify image.py, and I'm passing a, an optimized TensorFlow model, a TF Lite model called MobileNet um, uh, HTPU.TF Lite. You can actually download a lot of pre-trained, pre-optimized models from uh, Google's Corel model zoo. They have put uh, you know, all the popular models like um, uh, Inception, multiple versions of Inception, Mo MobileNet, um, and you know some of the other things that you can actually download, and, and you can straight away use that. And most of them are, are, are actually trained well to, to detect uh, multiple objects and multiple images. Uh, so they perform both object detection as well as image classification. So what we do is we pass this model and then we pass the labels file. The label file has 
a lot of labels you know like uh, you can identify a sparrow a parrot a crow a crane so it basically has a laundry list of all the possible birds that this model will recognize um, and then we are actually passing an image called parrot.jpg so let's go ahead and run demo.sh and see the output so this is going to simply print uh, the, the the image classification output it, it's going to take slightly longer the first time because it's actually uh, talking to the uh, usb accelerator and once it initializes and, uh, and 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 starts talking to the device it will be pretty fast okay uh, i guess it's actually not talking to my device now that's the reason why it is taking much longer than i expected so yeah so looks like the device is not recognized i'm going to plug this again and run my classification all over again and hopefully it should work yeah there we go perfect so now um, it actually recognized the image as a as a macaw as a scarlet macaw with 74 percent accuracy and if you run this again you know it's going to be pretty fast um, the the script is taking longer because it is it is loading the um, model again and it is loading all the all the labels but in real scenario we don't we don't need to load the model every time you know it, it is it is loaded once uh, it is initialized within the device the labels are also in memory so it actually performs inferencing pretty fast but in this demo we are loading the model and the labels all over again every time we execute that's why it is slower than what i thought so that is um, how you perform classification. If you are curious to look at the code for classify image, well, it is um, pretty straightforward. Now, if you actually look at the way it works, um, it, it, it loads the actual uh, model. So you pass three parameters, the model, the label, and the image. So you, you read the label file, and this is again a high level API that comes from um, uh, that comes from the uh, HTPU SDK. So, you know, read file, uh, read label file does nothing but open a CSV file and create a, an array out of it. So that is not uh, something very fancy, but the actual SDK comes with the classification engine method. And this is powerful. What it basically does is it, it takes a, a, a pre-trained model and, uh, and initializes this object called engine. And after that, you can call engine.classify image. So you can you can either send a static image or even you can send the video camera feed to perform real-time inferencing. So the HTPU SDK, once you install, uh, comes with these modules. So you know once you actually install the um, Corel dev kit and the uh, HTPU libraries, you you get this high level method and the class called uh, uh, classification engine dot classify and similarly there is one more uh, one more class and a method for object detection so you can also perform object detection um, in a very similar workflow so the beauty is it is just one method which is classify with image now if you are familiar with machine learning you know how simplified it is in a traditional world it is uh, in, in the normal TensorFlow world, this is much more verbose and you have to do a lot of plumbing before you can actually perform the uh, classification or detection. So that's the um, example that I want to show you where the USB accelerator is currently accelerating the ML inferencing. Now I want to show you something cooler. So uh, how about actually launching the camera and performing some real time, real world uh, inferencing. So first I'm going to run the demo and then I'll show you the code behind it. So what I'm actually launching is a TensorFlow model trained to identify two breeds of dogs. So here is the camera and what I'm going to do is uh, since I don't have dogs in my in my lab in my office room I'm going to pull up uh, a mobile phone loaded with some images. So Keep an eye on the terminal window and I'm going to bring this dog image and there we go. So this model, I have trained it on Google Cloud. It can recognize a Doberman and a Beagle. So it's a, it's a custom trained TensorFlow model and I have gone through the process of optimizing it for uh, HTTP. So I have run the TF Lite optimization compiler. So it's 
So it, it shows Doberman. Pretty cool. And look at the speed. You know, the inferencing is extremely fast. Um, we are getting almost 32 frames per second, which is decent enough. And then, you know, when I actually go to another dog type, so this is Beagle, and there we go. So cool. You know, it is, it is actually recognizing a Beagle. So this model is a custom model. I wanted to keep it simple. So I trained it with about 200 images of Beagle, 200 images of Doberman. Um, I, I trained the model on Google Cloud AI platform, uh, generated the protobuf, converted the protobuf into um, a TF light and further optimized it for the edge TPU. And uh, you know, I have wired it to the camera. So when you actually look at this, it is it's pretty cool. You know, this, this actually recognizes uh, only two, of course, but, but you can technically run um, the same workflow. You can, you can emulate it for many other scenarios. So that was the demo that I wanted to show you, you know, real world inferencing real time uh, with a real model. It is not a sample uh, shipped by Google. Uh, I'm planning to create a tutorial on how to do this end to end. Stay tuned for that. But you know that's the um, that's the live demo of using a camera with the with the uh, image. So again, you know the code is not very different. We are actually using the same code. You know, classify. Uh, we are loading mobile net, um, and you know there are there is an image net labels.txt. Oh no, are we on the Yeah, yeah, this is the one that I want to show you. So, uh, so we are loading the uh, labels. So, uh, you know, in, in my demo, when I'm actually running, I, I pass my custom TF light model, dog breed edge TPU TF light. So this is the custom model that I optimized and I am sending uh, breed.txt. So breed.txt has very few breeds that are trained, uh, mostly Beagle and Doberman. Uh, I didn't procure enough images for the Chihuahua, but um, uh, you know, I can actually do. I can have like multiple, multiple other breeds of dogs that are getting recognized. Uh, but I only trained the model with uh, just a couple of them. And then um, we we also mentioned the threshold. So only recognize and uh, you know print it if the threshold is 70% or higher, which means the probability of the dog being a Doberman or a Beagle when it is 70% or more, print it out. So that's what uh, is happening here. So again, we simply call the classification engine dot classify image, but instead of doing it with uh, the static image, we do it with the camera. So um, GStreamer is an SDK to talk to the webcam. So I'm actually using the webcam of my Linux laptop. Um, so, so that's how I basically perform inferencing from the camera. So instead of passing a static image, I get the feed and uh, pass that on to the classification engine. Perfect. So that was a quick walkthrough um, of the uh, the uh, 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 HTPU acceleration. Now we are almost towards the end of this. I want to I want to summarize before taking uh, questions. Again, this is a, a high level overview of HTPU and Google Corel dev kit. Uh, if you want a deeper dive and, and, and more intricate details on how to train, how to optimize, how to deploy, and how to build a pipeline. Stay tuned, I'm going to cover that in the coming webinars. Edge is a big focus area for me, and you would see the similar demo coming to Intel Movidius, Intel AI Vision X kit that I'm, I recently procured, and I'm porting this demo to that. I'll also show you how to do this with a Jetson Nano. Uh, and eventually on TX2. So the, the demo remains the same, but we'll switch multiple platforms. So pretty fascinating. Um, I, I am currently optimizing models for all the popular environments like HTPU and NVIDIA Jetson um, for TensorRT and Intel Movidius and Myriad chip with OpenVINO toolkit. Uh, so we are living in very interesting times. So summary, TPUs deliver end-to-end -end AI infrastructure, cloud TPUs for training, HTPUs for inferencing. HTPUs have a very small power footprint. They can be embedded in devices like drones or uh, for development, you can use an USB accelerator or get a system on chip or a, or a system on module dev kit with full blown Linux running on it. Um, the model got to be optimized for HTPU. So you have to generate a TF light and run it through another compiler um, to, to optimize it further. So that is the 
summary of this uh, session. Now, I want to thank our sponsors, the new stack. I have already written a, a detailed guide on the differences between USB Accelerator and Google Corel Dev Kit. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube, click on the description below and you will find links to the slide deck, to the article that I have written, and eventually even the source code that I'm going to publish. Um, so Foghorn is uh, a sponsor. They are a Bay Area based edge computing company, pretty innovative. They're a multi-cloud edge computing platform company. Portworx, a container native storage company, again, based in Bay Area. Thanks to our sponsors um, for enabling me to deliver these sessions. I also want to announce what's coming up next. So this was all about machine intelligence, you now AI plus IoT, and, and that's what I call as machine intelligence. Now, switching on to the infrastructure track, I'm very excited to bring you everything about HashiCorp console. And if you have been following my webinar series, this quarter was all about service mesh. I covered Istio extensively. I covered Linkerd last month. And this month, towards the end, I'm bringing you console. And we wrap up this quarter with a detailed session on console. This is on June 27th, Thursday at 9 a.m. PT, 9.30 p.m. IST. You can sign up at http mi2.live. Um, so it's time for a few questions. Okay, so there are a lot of questions. Let me see how many of them can be answered. If I'm unable to, I'll come back to you either on Twitter or I will drop you a note now that I have your email ID. So how good are these boards to run on battery? Well, the HDPU needs um, a good power source. You know, I would recommend using an AC power source that has at least two amp of power, you know, two amp of uh, um, current because without that, it is pretty hard. So running it on a battery is um, not advisable because it gets very hot. The HDPU draws quite a bit of power, the heat sink and the fan and rest of the uh, ARM Cortex processor, they all need power, they are very power hungry. So not sure if you can actually pull this off with a battery pack. Um, Darknet, would it be benefited from this hardware? I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I have seen TensorFlow Lite being optimized for models like Inception, uh, ResNet, LXNet and LayNet and so on, but uh, not sure of Darknet. I'll, I'll come back to you on that. So um, the the question is, can we can we replicate this demo with um, the ML accelerator, the USB accelerator? Absolutely. Uh, in fact, my demo was running a USB accelerator, though technically I could have run this with the dev kit. With uh, I also bought the camera. I could have connected it and showed it to you. But I thought uh, you know running it on a powerful machine will be faster and also easy for me to do a VNC session. It's a pain to uh, SSH into the um, the dev kit and stream the video onto go to go to webinar it is it is not going to be a pleasant experience so that's why i have chosen to use my linux host with the usb accelerator but technically you can run it on either is there a reason why i chose python versus c++ uh, python just easy you know the higher level apis just make you more productive uh, the same code that i have shown you about the classification engine uh, it would have taken twice the number of lines as python so it, it, Python just makes you more productive and I'm more comfortable with Python. All right, so I'm going to, I'm definitely going to take this as an input. Uh, I will figure out if we can optimize Darknet, YOLO3 and some of the other neural net models for um, HTPU and I'm going to write a detailed guide. Uh, uh, looks like, you know, there has been a lot of interest. So thanks again for uh, joining my webinar series and uh, do keep an eye on mi2.live next month, uh, which is actually next quarter, starting July, August, and September. I'm going to publish the calendar towards the month end. It is going to be another exciting quarter where I'll bring you the best from IoT Edge, microservices, and containers. Stay tuned and um, have a great rest of the week ahead. I will see you in my next webinar. Thank you.